From previous project, we had of course a pretty good understanding of how our established development methodologies worked. And now we were able to experience the difference with a model execution approach at first hand. When we use traditional coding, our typical development cycle was in the order of three to four months, even if we developed new services based on existing functionality. That was considered pretty normal. With traditional code-based development techniques, there is a lot of manual work required, which play the major factor in the timing and the quality of the result. Because things are hard to do, you tend to spend more time and budget than allocated. As a consequence, testing is usually cut short and the documentation is done superficially. This is not something which is Swisscom specific. The fact that one has to deal with code that is highly dependent on the individual developers makes it hard to change things. Everybody knows that and there is hardly anything you can do about this. At least that's what we thought before we heard about the E2E bridge. With this approach we didn't have to deal with code at all. It was possible to use executable UML models exclusively. What that meant in everyday terms, I would like to tell you in form of two anecdotes which happened exactly as I will describe them to you now. The first case happened on August 24, 2007. Aye Cher, who were implementing the project for us, had determined that for a particular KPI to be probably analyzed, we had to change how a particular attribute was extracted from the backend. That's exactly the type of change which occurs most frequently. Small things, right? But with code-based development, in the past it had always taken two to three weeks to get the result back. With inaccurate documentation, it's a lot harder to make out what to change and where. The actual change itself is usually trivial, but the time is already lost. Based on the e e bridge, where the documentation is always 100% complete and accurate, IdeaShare could implement the change request in 30 minutes. This included the modification to the model and the testing. After that, we were ready to deploy the change into the production environment. And of course, the documentation was 100% complete and accurate, because that's an implicit benefit of using direct model execution. The documentation is the code and vice versa. No chance they will ever drift apart. It's simply impossible. That brought a level of transparency which we had never experienced before. And one of the strongest capabilities, which I have not seen anywhere else, is that the debugging also happens at the level of UML and not at the code level. So after these 30 minutes, even all the test cases were completely documented in UML and available for regression testing later on. The second case was much more complex. It involved a complete release upgrade of the backend system, which usually causes a lot of delays and additional costs. To make things worse, the upgrade was scheduled to happen around the same time we planned to go live with Procore. Now, I don't need to tell you what that usually means. It means that you can forget your original project schedule. And even in the best case, you're easily looking at a two to three month delay. But not in this case. And this is really unbelievable. On August 31st, 2007, we had a meeting with the provider of the backend system and discussed all necessary changes within one hour. Thereafter, the changes were implemented in the E2E bridge, which took no more than 16 hours. And the result was that the changes were already implemented at the same time as the new release of the backend system went live. So we were indeed capable of keeping our original project deadline and go live with Procore around September 10th, an experience I will never forget. Here you see an architectural overview of the plan setup. It's really quite straightforward. On the top, we have the Aris PPM server, which collects information of the backend via E2E bridge. The bridge works as a generic adapter for Aris PPM, which brings us a lot of flexibility. It allows us to make changes to either the PPM setup or the backend application without having both impact each other. And it can easily accommodate additional backend alongside of EDAS Echo, so it's a future-proof setup which can be reused for other scenarios. Now let's have a look at the system as we use it every day. Everything is integrated into our intranet, including all information around the project. This was a key requirement from management, as it is always difficult to find all relevant information around a particular project readily available in one place. That's what we see here. 
A lot of the information is of course confidential and I can't show it in a lot of detail, but at least you can see the context of how we use the information. We see all the users who are educated to use the system. We have the release notes and frequently asked questions. What we have as well is all information related to project operations, including the implementation budget, software budget, hardware budget, as well as our change management budget. One of the most interesting aspects if we talk about costs is the fact that our change management budget is in fact seven times less compared to similar effort because the overall transparency and quality that can be achieved with the model execution approach is simply higher. Here you see all the contributors to the project in their various roles. We have a complete listing of all issues that have occurred after going live. And this is as well a good measure of the quality of the approach as well as the stability and maturity of the E2E bridge. What we can see here is that overall we only had two issues which are of course solved since a long time. If you compare that with issue lists we have in the projects of comparable size where the development is code based, where the documentation and testing needs to be performed by hand and where we have easily several hundred issues to take care of Ending up with only two issues at the end of six months in use in production is pretty impressive. Then we have here all the contracts and documents related to them. And finally, we have here all training videos. We make extensive use of online videos since it is much simpler to quickly record a live session rather than writing lengthy manuals, which are quickly out of date and which can be easily misunderstood. Here we see the project management aspects, which are as well completely modeled. We use here the value engineering approach from IdeaShare, and as you can see, every aspect is properly documented. If you're not used to this, it looks like a lot of work, but the fact that you can use an established methodology and templates really makes things easy. And what we have here as well is a complete documentation of the application interfaces. In other words, how we access our backend from the Aris PPM server to feed KPIs into the process warehouse for further analysis. This documentation is automatically generated after each deployment we make from our E2E bridge. And the models are converted into HTML documents that every user can surf through to understand how every single attribute has been mapped and how the necessary transformations are being performed. Here you see, for example, that for this project we have used some 140 interface models. That is also useful for our management as they have the full transparency to see how we spend the budget. And if someone wants to go into the details and if one understands the basics of UML, one can go and surf through the entire model starting from the use case diagram. Here you see that we have implemented two services, one for interactive data extraction and one that is automatically triggered all 30 minutes to provide regular data loads on a continuous basis. And now, if you want to understand in detail how we extract all the KPIs, you can surf along the activities until you get the information you are looking for. For example here, do the data mapping for measuring point of main process. I can go into more detail until I get to the point where I can look at the data mapping and how each attribute is eventually used by the process performance manager. And finally, you see the deployment diagrams, which describe how the various systems are configured at runtime. In this case, we see the SQL server from the productive system, and there is also a similar model describing the test environment. What is really fascinating when you look at these models is the fact that you are actually looking at the code that the E2E bridge executes. So you look at the models exactly the way they are used by the E2E runtime. I have never seen that anywhere else. Quite impressive. A further aspect is the process publishing part. This shows all processes we have documented during the last two years. This is a standard web export from the Aris Business Publisher. Nothing special, we use the product as is. And everyone who has access to the intranet can surf through the process documentation. For the day-to-day -day operations, we have built a number of dashboards and on this slide you see some of them. For any given aspect of process control, we have the possibility to make drill downs and go to the level of detail that we need.